And then the war was over in Europe, VE Day in, uh, I guess, April of 1945. Where did they put me? But the Armed Forces Recruiting Service in Los Angeles, because the war was just about over then, and they were beginning to recruit for the post-war army, of the war of the army of occupation. Well, I uh, wasn't expected to do recruiting. What I was there for, they said, was that the during the war, a television station, the first television station in Los Angeles, in Hollywood, had been closed down by government order. There was no television work during the war. Uh, they said to me that they had this television station and they didn't know what to do with it and would I go out there and experiment. So I went out there with the two colleagues, or two or three colleagues from the recruiting office and we started experimenting and we created the first television broadcast the U.S. Army ever did. Uh, and that it was all written up, of course, and I was just a sergeant, so my name didn't appear in the story, but the, the story of the broadcast did appear in an Army publication, and again, that is in my papers down in Austin. And uh, I was doing that work part-time, I guess, uh, and I, w I was finally discharged in February of 1946, but we had another, I had another experience, and since I didn't know anything about recruiting, but I at least knew as much as the other guys, uh, I remember one thing we did, we borrowed a tank from the Army, and we got Betty Grable, who was then a, movie, a prominent movie star, sexy movie star, to climb on top of the tank and she was going to ride it through downtown uh, Hollywood in Los Angeles to get publicity and urge people to join the army. <coughs> now, well, what happened was it, it worked okay. I don't know whether anybody ever joined as a result, but we got lots of publicity. But the 